Hi, this is Chandra Davis with Art Therapy Lab, and today I want to talk to you about watercolors, my absolute favorite painting medium to use. Now today I want to show you three different ways in which you can do watercolor. I have three different techniques that I like to use interchangeably. You can use them separately or together or with different mediums all, all together. Um, one thing that I want to tell you and warn you about watercolors is it relies it relies heavily on, on your state of being. So you have to be patient. You have to be patient with yourself and patient with the materials. I oftentimes say that it requires breathing, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth and a calm, steady sense about yourself and where you are in the moment. So please be patient. Watercolor is not for everybody. I particularly like it because of the consistency in the materials. I can feel like I can make it do anything. I can conquer the world <laughs> with my watercolor. So let's get started. Like I said before, we have um, three different types of watercolor that I'm gonna show you today. And the first is watercolor pencils. Now these are an excellent way to get started with watercolor, especially if you're not familiar with the fluidity of this material or, or any type of paints. If you're more of a drawer, you like to use graphite pencils or color pencils or even markers, then you might want to get started with the color pencils, um, I mean the watercolor pencils to get started with, okay? So it works pretty much just like um, color pencils would. You just take it, um, the medium, and you just stroke and draw onto the paper. You can add as much pressure as you want. Um, what I like to do when I particularly use this material is I like to use it to draw with. Perhaps I'm sketching out um, an image, so I want to capture the shape and then perhaps fill it in with um, the other types of watercolor. Um, it's great for using that. And as you can see, it is applied very similar to color pencils. It goes on very smoothly. Um, you can get a nice um, line drawing with it or you can get a nice fill with it. And what you can do, which is completely optional, is what you go, what you do is you go over it with a wet brush. So you have a watercolor brush, something like a soft, a soft bristle brush um, depending on what you're doing, you can have it rounded or squared. Um, you dip it in water, as much water as you feel comfortable with. I like to start off with a light bit of water. And you just gently stroke it over the image you drew previously with the watercolor pencils. And as you can see, it immediately turns into a fluid material. Very much so like regular watercolor that comes in a palette or in a tube. And as you can see, it smooths out pretty consistently like watercolor does. And whenever I am telling anyone who's new to watercolors to get started, I like to use a little bit of water starting out at first. And then based on your comfort level, what you want to achieve, you can go heavier with water. You can definitely use a lot more water to kind of wash it out and get a more transparent color in, as you can see in this image there. Okay, so quick and simple, that is watercolor pencils. All right, now the next thing I wanna show you is a watercolor palette. This is a dry palette. Um, they come in many different sets and sizes with an assortment of colors. I like to use this because it lasts forever. I've probably had this set for many, many years. And as you can see, the colors are dry, but they're supposed to be. They don't completely dry out like paints do in, in tubes or in jars. So this could last you for a really long time. It's great to travel with. It's compact and easy. All you need is this, a small container of water and a brush and you can paint anywhere. So this is a great thing to have if you like to travel and do art on the fly. So starting out with our brush and water. Like I said earlier, I like to always start off with just a little bit of water just to get a fill for the color. And you do, what you do is you take the brush and you just stroke it over the color palette and get as much color as you feel comfortable with. You really want to kind of loosen it up and get, get it from that dry state to a moist state. You see, once you get the desired amount of your brush, you just apply the brush onto your paper and you can paint away like so. And the trick with watercolor is really being able to, to have a consistency in which you can go from a dark, solid color to perhaps a more light, transparent color because you really want to be able to create layers. That's 
That's the point of watercolors, is to be able to create layer, depth, and transparency with this light, airy touch of, of the color. So, as you can see, I just did some lines and starting off thicker, getting thinner, lighter in color. Very easy to use. Just takes a certain amount of patience and practice. If you want to, if you're, if you're like I said, if you're new to watercolors, you might just want to buy this and just kind of play around with the colors and just take a brush and a scrap piece of paper and just kind of play around and see about thicknesses and transparency and line strokes and how comfortable you feel um, just making varied shapes onto the page. Now, for the third watercolor technique, I'm actually going to show you watercolors in a tube. And this is actually called a gouache, which isn't quite watercolors. It's a little bit thicker. If we were to look at paints on a scale and watercolors were the most transparent, gouache would be right next to them. They're a lot more opaque, but still have that same consistency and fluidity of watercolors. So what you want to do is you want to have a palette for your paint and you apply the paint into the palette the desirable amount. If you want to mix colors, you may mix colors. I learned in art school that you always mix colors in the palette, not on your canvas or paper. So apply as many colors as you want onto the palette that you want to use or you want to mix and try. And then once you have that set, you go at it in a very similar way. I'm going to actually switch out my brush. One thing I like to do with watercolors is I like to, if I'm going to change colors, I like to thoroughly clean out my brush, meaning to swish it around in water and then dabbing it onto a cloth surface. Or if I have the, the luxury, I use um, multiple brushes to achieve that. So I'm going to just use a different brush and I dip it in water and I apply it to the colors and I just paint with it as so. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but it's coming across a lot thicker than how the previous watercolors have. So let me just show you here, for example. It's coming across a lot thicker, it's much more opaque. So definitely if you're doing some work that requires a little bit more um, boundaries between the layers, you want to definitely go with a gouache, okay? But if you want to add a little bit more transparency, just add a little bit more water to your color. And as you can see, you can achieve the same amount of transparency as you would with the other watercolors. See, I kind of layered the colors in a bit so you can see how transparent it is. Now, watercolors are infamously used for landscapes, for still lives, but I like to push the envelope and just use it for whatever type of subject matter that I like to capture or create. It's really all about patience and breathing. So it's a great way to develop a meditative technique with yourself by doing a little bit of watercoloring. A very simple, easy technique that you can do is follow your breath. So you take a brush. I'm just gonna use this brush again, make sure it's clean. Add a little bit of color and just follow the natural rhythm of your breath, okay? So I'm just gonna take it and take a deep breath and just let the breath out. And as I let the breath out, I'm gonna do a stroke on the paper, okay? I'm gonna do it again, add some paint, take a deep breath. And just let it out, okay? Just as easy, as simple as that. Watercolor is an excellent material to get started with. If you're new to art making, if you're new to art therapy, Definitely take a look at more videos on arttherapylab.com. If you're totally new to the site and just not seeing this for the first time, join. Go to arttherapylab.com backslash join. And if you're new to the premium videos and want to see more of me doing art making, definitely join our premium membership. Thank you so much.